Nearly a year after Governor Greg Abbott ordered a task force to look at the state's teacher shortages, the state task force is recommending lawmakers improve the working habits of teachers. The current state task force is in charge of finding out why these shortages exist and what policy changes need to be made in order to retain teachers or make the certification process more flexible. The report they make will then be shared with government education committees and made for the public to see. On a local level, some education programs like Pre-K SA have taken steps forward in increasing pay for local teachers. Certainly believe that teachers deserve a pay increase and at Pre-K for SA, we have built that into our model to make sure that teachers are paid uh, the, what they're worth in terms of the important work that they do, especially early learning teachers who are often paid less than other teachers in the system. Of course, the challenge is implementing the new wages across all of Texas, and some are hoping the historic $35.7 billion budget surplus could be used to prioritize teacher salaries. Millions of Americans are feeling the impact of a major winter storm system that is bringing rain, wind and snow all across the West tonight. ABC's Jacqueline Lee on how that storm is expected to travel over the heartland and then into the Northeast in the coming days. As major winter storms travel across the country, millions of Americans are bracing for treacherous weather conditions. In California, powerful winds toppling trees and bringing down power lines, leaving homes and businesses in the dark. Thunderstorms leading to a ground stop at LAX. Departures bound for parts of California, Nevada, Utah and Arizona delayed. Some arrivals diverted to Ontario, California. In the Los Angeles River, the heavy rains raising the water level several feet higher than usual. It's pretty treacherous conditions up north. There's a lot of snow, a lot of ice. Further north, the San Francisco Bay Area seeing its second day of snow. Legit snow, like no joke. Uh, you know, not just a little uh, dusting, but legit snow here in the East Bay Hills. Ten-year-old Jackie Pierce getting the chance to build her first snowman. Thank you weather for snowing. Portland, Oregon hit with more snow. A state highway worker injured after stopping to help a motorist. The driver of the van losing control after hitting ice. That same weather system expected to move east through the weekend, bringing with it damaging winds to parts of the Midwest, where residents are already digging out from a storm earlier this week. Many in Michigan are still without power after an ice storm blanketed parts of the state on Wednesday. And the Northeast, which hasn't seen much wintry weather so far this season, could feel the impacts of that western storm by Tuesday. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. No snow or ice for us here in South Central Texas. Just scenes like this throughout the first half of the weekend. Plenty of cloud cover has been found throughout this Saturday, but we have managed to find just a few small peaks of some of that blue sky. Overall, expect more of the cloud cover to stick with us for any evening plans. In fact, we're going to start off tomorrow morning pretty gloomy out there. Could be a damp start in spots to our Sunday as some additional humidity works in. Patchy morning fog and drizzle certainly possible. Possible. Windy conditions are also going to develop for the second half of the weekend's plans, as well as spring-like temperatures that return to the forecast. Just how long those spring-like temperatures will last, we'll have that for you after the break. Didn't feel or look very spring-like today, but via all those uh, warm, sunny days we had earlier this week, the spring blooms really popping all over the place around here. They really are. We've actually gotten some really good pictures in uh, through KSAT Connect of some of those spring blooms across portions of South Central Texas. No really sun out there for us today, and really tomorrow for the most part, especially in the morning, we'll see more clouds. But I think tomorrow afternoon, some peaks of sunshine will be possible, and then full blown out sun does return Monday and into Tuesday of next next week. The big story today, yes, has been the cloud cover. Temperatures, though, have been able to warm a bit more compared to where we topped off yesterday. Afternoon highs were in the low 60s here in San Antonio. This afternoon, upper 60s and low 70s across South Central Texas. 68 right now over at SA International. 64 up in Bernie. 68 in New Braunfels, stretching over to Converse. 73 in Pleasanton and 71 in Divine this 5 p.m. hour. If you're stepping out for any Saturday evening plans, temperatures will 
still be cool out there. Low 60s transitioning to the upper 50s late tonight and overall those cloudy skies will stick with us. Now we did find some areas of drizzle, a couple of sprinkles out there earlier this morning, but for the most part this afternoon has been pretty dry. Not a whole lot out there on the radar, at least being detected. Maybe a few sprinkles approaching Highway 90 out there in the southwestern portions of Medina County. For the most part, while we could find a stray sprinkle or two later this evening, I think the better chance for finding some additional patches and pockets of drizzle develop arrives after midnight. As we head into the early morning hours of our Sunday, we are expecting more humidity to work its way back into south central Texas. So you can see here on your future cast some additional areas of drizzle possible, especially by the time you're stepping out for any Sunday morning plans. Also, we are expected to find some areas of patchy fog out there, some of which could be dense in spots. So be sure to take it easy out there on the roadways first thing tomorrow morning. Overall, just kind of a damp start to the day. But as we head into Sunday afternoon, there the cloud cover then expected to break up a little bit more and some more peaks of sunshine in the forecast. Temperature wise, it will be a muggy start Sunday morning. Low 60s here in San Antonio around 73 through the lunchtime hour and then the warming trend continues about 10 degrees warmer tomorrow afternoon currently expected compared to what we've seen out there earlier today. Overall daytime highs topping off in the upper 70s, low 80s, well above average for this time of year. 78 in Bull Verde, 82 at Stinson and 83 over in Sabinow. Something else I do think you'll notice tomorrow, some gusty winds upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour at times, even gustier out in West Texas. So maybe a little bit of dust, not completely out of the question, transporting in by Monday, an isolated chance for a shower tomorrow night. Most of us stay dry. The big story next week, Tim, those warming temperatures with highs approaching the mid to even upper 80s by Wednesday. We are flirting with 90 by Wednesday. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mia. All right, uh, basketball, high school girls basketball in particular, busy day for that. Yeah, it's one of the biggest, busiest days on the high school sports calendar, specifically in girls basketball. Today, they tried to claim their place in next week's state tournament. When we come back, we've got three teams heading for sure, plus the TMI boys after their difficult loss last year in double overtime, they're bringing home the title. Got that too next. <laughs> A trip to the Alamo Dome for the UIL Girls State Basketball Tournament was on the line this afternoon at Northside Sports Gym as Clark took on Brennan in the Class 6A Regional Final, and both teams brought their A game in the first quarter. Taylor Ross knocks down a three from the wing. Her second three ball makes it 7-5 Brennan. Clark responds. Ariana Robertson hauls in the deflected pass and finishes to tie it back up. Back down the floor, Tyra Sotelo gives Brennan the lead again with this tough floater, but the Cougars answer back again. This time, Natalie Huff finds Ramsey Robledo in transition for the three. It's 13-11 Clark as the crowd starts to come alive. And then Robertson pops out for a long baseline jumper. Cougars are up 15-13 after one. Second quarter, Clark pours it on. Caitlin Whitlock splashes a corner three on the first play for a five-point lead. Then check out the ball movement here. Cameron Griffin to Robertson. Back out to Robledo for another triple. Timeout Bears. Clark now leads it 26-15, and they keep it going. Robertson hauls in the nice feed and finishes with the lay-in, and Clark leads 34-20 at halftime. They are heading back to state as Class 6A regional champs, 57-38. I think we came in knowing that we've been here before and that we knew we just had to come start in and take care of business. Our shooting it was a big help and I just think the experience we had just helped us calm down and do our job. Definitely feels great um, having that same level of intensity and competition that we played last year. Um, we knew we wanted to get there so we used that as our motivation and boost to lead us here and it feels great honestly. We knew that we could do it um, but we have a little bit of a different group. We graduated a lot of phenomenal talent and so um, I think it feels equally as sweet. Um, definitely a lot more pressure this year than we felt last year in this moment. Clark will play in the Class 6A state semifinals next Friday night. In Class 5A, the Wagner girls look to punch their own tickets to state, taking on Liberty Hill at Littleton Gym, and the Thunderbirds put on a show. Alina Garza finds Savani Sancho wide open down court for the lay-in, and then a little later, Sancho strikes again, this time with a Euro step for another lay-in. Wagner's up 40-22 to in the third quarter, and they keep it going. L.A. Sneed comes up with the steal on one end, pushes the pace to the other side, decides not to force a shot, kicks it back out to a Bagley for three. That was a good decision, and it makes it a 20-point game. 
They're not done. This time Sneed in a similar situation goes straight to the basket, draws contact, count it, and one. And the Thunderbirds are going to state as well. 64 to 48 is the final. It's an amazing feeling knowing that we're actually going to Alamo Dome. Like we've been working on this all year just to get to this point. How about it? I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I have all kind of emotions. Uh, the girls have worked their butt off since. Last year, like we started like right after the Johnson game last year. We had a team meeting and we did not want to have that feeling in the first round again like we had against Johnson and they've been working their butt off every day in the summertime, off season, preseason. Um, we had a tough preseason just for this reason. Wagner will play in the Class 5A state semifinals this Thursday night at the Alamo Dome. Bernie will join them at state. The Greyhounds earned a slice of revenge and defeated Fredericksburg in the OIL Class 4A regional final this afternoon, 49 to 40. This marks Bernie's second appearance at state in the last three seasons. In Class 3A, Lytle almost knocked off Columbus, but ultimately came up short 62 to 59 in the Class 3A regional final. And lastly, DeHennis fell in the Class 1A regional final to Netsha, 68 to 34. In boys hoops, the defending Class 5A regional champs Bernie Champion punched their tickets to the third round yet again with a convincing 60-41 victory over Harlandale last night. The Chargers used an all-around team performance highlighted by 13 points from senior big man Braden Baum and 14 points from junior Charlie Georgilis. Team, the key word. Just our teamwork, um, all, the, all the days leading up to it, really uh, everybody got in the gym early in the mornings, put in the work, we're communicating with one another um, on and off the court, talking about uh, towards the end you saw their, uh, their trap and we're really talking about how to get out of that trap and as a team it takes all of us to, to, beat, that, to beat that type of defense. The Chargers will next face Alamo Heights in the regional quarterfinals this week. The Mules defeated Wagner 44-31 last night and held the Thunderbirds to just four points in the second half. Meanwhile, for the second straight season, the TMI boys had a chance to claim the TAPS 5A state title. This year, they're taking on St. Michael's Catholic at Robinson High School. Pick this one up, final seconds of the first half. Kick out to Yashi McKenzie in the corner. That three ball gives the Panthers a 23-22 lead at the break. Second half, they find some separation. First, McKenzie tips the loose ball right to Kendrick DeLuna, who finishes with the lay-in, forcing a Crusaders timeout. TMI leads 31-26. Then, after the breather, Jalen Gardner comes up with the steal, gets it ahead to McKenzie, who finishes at the other end. McKenzie had a team-high 19 points, and the Panthers are state champs with a 53-46 victory. In college hoops, the top-seeded Trinity women's basketball team hosted TLU in the semifinals of the SCAC tournament. Bulldogs making this a game in the second quarter. Kayla Presley gets an open look, top of the arc, knocks it down to pull TLU within single digits. Tigers respond, though. Josie Napoli with a great bounce pass to Addie Putnam for the easy layup. Trinity's right back up by 13. The back and forth battle continues. Tanise Merrick working in the paint, gets it to go. But again, the Tigers have an answer. This time, Putnam finds Ashlyn Milton in the corner for three. Trinity runs away with this one, 77 to 62, and will play for the SCAC title tomorrow at noon. The UTSA women's basketball team looked for their longest winning streak of the season this afternoon, hosting Florida International. Third quarter, Roadrunners rallying. Jordan Jenkins gets it to fall. Count it and one. Three-point play makes it a one-point game. Then on the next possession, they strike again. Inbounds pass to Haley Atwood for a corner three, and we're all tied up at 50 apiece. But the run's not done yet. Kira White with a perfect bounce pass to Jenkins for the lay-in to make it 54-52 UTSA. And then a little later, White calls her own number, knocks down the jumper, make it three in a row. The UTSA women win it 85-79. to Coming up later tonight, Spurs back in action for the final leg of their rodeo road trip. Two back-to-back -back games in Utah. First one had the highlights on the night beat. Busy day in the gym and on the court. Thank you, Andrew. You got Be it. right back. Finally tonight, after 20 years, the Lord of the Rings fantasy world is coming back to the big screen. Warner Brothers Discovery announced that uh, this week multiple new movies set in Middle Earth are in development. They signed a deal with Free Mode, which bought the rights to Tolkien's works uh, last year. Warner Brothers Animation and its sister company New Line Cinema are already working on The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rorim. The animated film is set 183 years before Lord of the Rings and tells the story of King Helm Hammerhand, ruler of Rohan. I'm sure we'll learn all about it. All right, some patchy fog possible tomorrow morning and then more sunshine and warmer temperatures next week, Tim. We'll see you for the night beat after NBA tonight. Have a good evening.